Good morning. As always, um, I ask for are there any announcements? Um, and Linda, if I could ask you to turn the fan on. It's already. Um, there's a uh, shift in fact for Wednesday uh, <coughs> carnations for next week. They're three dollars each. Just let me know. Uh, Sign up in the back and let me know. And also, the, the uh, geraniums on the altar are in memory of my dad, who raised many a ger geranium in his lifetime. So, uh, I apologize for not putting that in the, in the bulletin. So, uh, I was wondering when they were on my desk, but they're my mother's favorite flowers. Oh, that shade of red, too, especially. So, um, it's fine. There's a card in the back for the Carlisle family. Uh, I just wanted to announce a little bit of what happened uh, at the second week of General Conference. In the last week, we had a lot of excitement with the regionalization, which was a, a huge thing for the United States delegation. Um, they had wanted that for a long time. Uh, the past week, a number of historic things happened. Um, the, general, the general level of our denomination, which is the national level, uh, voted to lower their budget. 22%. So, most churches are now crossing their fingers saying, let's hope that trickles down to the local church. That's a kind of wait and see what will happen, but that was good to hear. And I think that was done because uh, we lost, I think, through disaffiliation last year, almost 20 some percent of the churches uh, globally, or that probably just in the U.S., were disaffiliated. So, kind of adjust for that. Um, we now have, uh, for the first time, an African American woman uh, running the Council of Bishops, uh, Bishop Tracy Malone. She's Steve Court's bishop um, from East Ohio. Uh, I know he holds her in very high regard, a uh, very special lady. And uh, Native American preachers, uh, Bishop got to preach for the first time, was very active within the whole general conference, which again, something new, something different. But I think the biggest thing was that. They voted on legislation with and no discussion ensued to remove the language for the LGBTQ community, um, the, the discriminatory and the restrictive language completely from our book of discipline and rewrote the social principles. And what this means is that those pastors among us who have been part of the LGBTQ community can now be open about it. We have happy folks. It's just that they couldn't be open about it. Uh, so the LGBTQ is open and we can do things as marriages in our churches. And it's truly, for the first time, a long time. You probably might not have noticed I have not used this logo of ours because I never felt it was true that we have open hearts, open minds, open doors. And now we truly do. And so that is why that is on the front cover. Um, I'm trying to remain kind of neutral on the inside and know that I am doing a happy dance. Because I have wanted this, a lot of us have wanted this for a long time, and it has finally gotten here. But I also respect and understand that for some folks, they are not happy about the vote within our denomination. So wherever you fall on the spectrum, let us all be respectful of one another's uh, positions and understanding. And yet, and move forward together as the United Methodist Church to the future. So, with that, let us stand and sing number 140, Grace is by Faithfulness.
like if we join together centering our worship. Living, Living God, God, maker of heaven and earth, we gather together, together in your name. name. We come as living sacrifices to offer you our, our worship and thanksgiving, our praise and our prayers. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our hearts and minds so that we might recognize your presence, hear your voice, know your will, and walk in your way. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Now is the time of our service, as always, where we raise before God and one another our joys, our cares, our concerns. So are there any prayer requests this morning? Yes, Barbara. For my friend Jane, who has been um, dealing with back problems, and now she has bronchitis, and uh, she's very weak. Prayers for you all. Prayers for who? Jane. Oh, Jane. This morning, her granddaughter Rachel yeah. has had surgery but has left her partially paralyzed. Uh, they feel that through rehab she will regain her mobility. But uh, she did very well in college, she finished her college year, but now she has to go to rehab and get back on her feet. Poor that girl, yes, she's been through a lot. Yes, she has. I'm 21. prayers for my Aunt Virginia's uh, not verbal, not anything but her staff are good. So it's her body's pregnant. And spirit wants to go but the body doesn't. So also for all the protests, college protests, um, without mentioning names, uh, this is affecting obviously everyone present. But some of that Walnut Valley was at Kent State at one of those first college shootings and whatever, and it's bringing up a lot for that person. And so things like this, for anyone who's gone through and anything similar, this is a very difficult time. And as always, the, what do you call it? all the weather things that are happening, it's just too much to name. An annual conference is coming up. That you keep that in your prayers. That will be um, two Sundays from now. Larry and I will not be here. We'll be down in Wildwood for annual conference. So, let us pray. Gracious, Almighty, Living God, once again, where we are gathered together as a family of faith, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as people whose lives and hearts and spirits. You have touched, you have shaped, you have blessed, you have carried, you have comforted, you have everything, Lord. And we are here in this one way to lift our thanks and praise to you. For we can acknowledge you as God of all creation, Lord of our lives, and yet you know us each by name and all that we go through each and every day. And Lord, we are grateful for your presence, for your spirit, for your wisdom and guidance and comfort and strength and all that you pour out on us, in us, and through our lives. And Lord, as we gather, we also gather with cares and concerns on our hearts that we know we can place on your altar at this time. Begin by praying for Jane, who's dealing with so much between back pain and now bronchitis and feeling weak. We just place her in your care, Lord, and ask you as our great physician to heal her um, 
help her body to grow strong and healthy once again so that she can uh, just be in fullness and wholeness of health. Lord, we celebrate with Ariana as she continues to grow up and makes it to booster seat level. Uh, it's always a, a fun day, a great day for them when they reach this milestone. And so continue to watch over her and bless her and keep her safe, not even in the booster seat. And Lord, we continue prayer, prayers for Corinne and her healing process. It is good to hear that she is out of the hospital. So we ask that um, what she needs to go through now with the antibiotics, that you will help her body to heal fully and completely and return her to fullness and wholeness of health. And Lord, we especially place Rachel back in your care. This young lady has gone through so much for us, and now that she's had some surgery and has left us partially paralyzed, I pray, Lord, that you will guide the doctors caring for her and the physical therapists caring for her, that she may regain fully all her function, and that she can grow stronger each and every day, and just at some point continue to live a healthy, healthy, happy life. Lord, we continue our same prayers for Alan as she continues to struggle. Lord, help her grow strong. Help her body to respond to whatever is being done so she can also return to life as normal, to a healthy 19-year-old and full of strength and full of um, excitement at life ahead. Keep her in your care. Guide the doctors caring for her and return her to that fullness of health that you did not long ago. Lord, I continue prayer, praying for Aunt Virginia as she continues to struggle. Lord, I thank you that her, the time she was having left is being filled with family and friends and laughter and love, but Lord, her spirit is ready. She would love to be called home, and it seems her body is fighting that. So Lord, in your goodness, in your mercy, bring her home to you so she can be at peace and at freedom as she so desires. So be with her and be with her family and everyone who's being affected by her journey. Lord, for what is happening on college campuses across our country and the protests and the violence and all that is happening on college campuses and what's happening in the Middle East as they are tied together, Lord, we look to you for wisdom, for guidance, for help, because I don't know what to pray for anymore. All but know that I acknowledge that your, your thoughts are greater than our thoughts, and your ways are greater than ours. Help us to bring about peace and respect and harmony and all that is needed for people to live their lives as they see fit. And Lord, for all who have been affected by the floods and the tornadoes and all the other natural disasters that are happening across this globe, we pray for those who have lost loved ones. May your spirit bring them comfort and peace. For those who are missing loved ones, may your spirit give them strength and hope that their loved ones may be found. And for those who have lost things like a home or business, we just pray that somehow your hand and your heart reach them and give them hope for the future, that you, may they know that you are walking with them and will get them through this and life will return to normal in the future. May they hold on to this hope, which is our faith. And Lord, I pray for annual conference that is coming up. Um, general conference is any indication. Lord, I look forward to this annual conference. May you fill it with your spirit. May all the delegates that come listen for your voice and for your guidance and lead us forward in, into the future. So bless it, I pray, through your spirit. And there are those, Lord, who are worshiping with us from their kitchens and from their couches who also have cares and concerns that they place on your altar at this time. Lord, for those who have remained and they need your healing touch, we ask you as our great physician to return each one to fullness and wholeness of health. For those who may have been named or grieving at this time, Pray that your spirit brings them comfort and peace. And for those who have just given thanks for a wonderful event in life, we thank you for being there, blessing it, making it all the more worth it. 
And as always, we pray for the poor. Where there is war, let there be peace. Where there is oppression, let there be freedom. Where there is hunger, may they be fed. Where there is illness, may they be healed. Through us, through others, may this world come to know the peace and unity in our minds. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. 
Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. <coughs> Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, mine, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will keep burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And with that, we can stand and sing number 2039. Holy, holy, we'll sing the verses 1, 2, and 5. Age stuff, and before you cringe when you hear new age, 
But things do come out of it. It got me on a daily prayer basis. It got me you know, redoing devotions. A lot of good came out of it. And um, so when I started coming to St. John's, and um, this is how, yeah, during that New Age stuff, though, it was lacking something. Couldn't put my finger on it, couldn't describe it, but I knew I was missing something in life. And so I prayed. I prayed to God that he would send me someone or something, never expecting to join another dogmatic religion. Um, that's how I felt at the time. But I figured he could send me someone. And what happened at that point in time, too, I was bringing Philip here for our preschool play group. Those of you who have been here long enough remember when we had that. And um, Elsa Court was running it, the pastor's wife. And within two weeks of my prayer, Elsa got a full-time job. And Steve took over the preschool playgroup. And I knew within two weeks of him starting at the preschool, at this playgroup, that he was my walking answer to prayer. Because he was willing to answer questions, he was willing to talk and whatever. And that, you know, long story got him coming here and going. And, I mean, this and it took a few months, but it, finally I had to sit down with him. So I'm still missing something. And I sensed it here, but I didn't know what it was. And so he and I had to sit down one day before the playgroup, and I said, why do I need Christ? And Steve, in his flipping way, goes, because you do. <laughs> Not good enough. Not good enough. And we had a, a deep conversation, and it was at the end of that conversation that I committed my life to Christ, and accepted Christ. And, you know, then this, the journey started like a roller coaster ride. And... After I had accepted Christ, I decided I better start reading this thing called the Bible. Because I wanted to know what did I just commit my life to? Because we didn't read it as Catholics. You were told what it said. You didn't get to read it yourself. And I started with the New Testament. I did not read the whole thing. And when I got to this, today's Matthew passage, it was ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. It hit me like a brick that that's exactly what God had done for me in my prayer. Before I had even fully accepted Christ, before I had you know, committed my life, he was so gracious. I remember crying as I read that thing. Because the old Catholic in me is like, no, you've got to do something. You've got to, you know, you've got to work for God's grace. You don't just, he just doesn't give it to you. So this passage is very special to me. And it also teaches me a lot about how God answers prayer even before we know it. And so I want us to look at this and, and see what does it teach us. It kind of seems kind of simple, maybe poetic, you know, to ask and seek and knock. But there's more, it's the Greek than meets the, the ear in English, as usual. Uh, the first word is, you know, ask and you will receive. Well, the Greek word for ask, ask does mean just ask, get out there. But along with that is implied that the person doing the asking, for lack of a better description, has a lower status than the person they're talking to. Jesus kind of gives that in, in his analogy at the, you know, halfway through where he says, you know, who, when their child asks a parent for a fish, the parent gives them a stone. You know, that child-parent relationship, worker, boss, patient, a doctor, and However it is, you know, the one asking is of lower status, so to speak. And in case you're wondering, there's another Greek word for when the two people are on equal points. So it's important to realize the specific one Jesus chose to use. So this first part about ask, and you, will um, you shall receive an answer, it's about reminding oneself that as comfortable as your relationship may be with Jesus, because I know he calls us friends, he calls us brothers and sisters, God is still God, and we are not. And God's thinking and God's ways are greater than our ways. And that should always, we should always understand, I hate to say our position when we are praying to God, that as much as we can, we realize our position before God, for who is greater. Now the second 
posture or thing of prayer is to seek. And again, Greek has several different words for to seek. And you might be wondering, just like I mean, how many different ways are there to seek? Well, they have several. Uh, one is you know, to search out or investigate. Think of a cop or detective. They investigate. There's a word for to seek carefully and intensely. And this is the seek that Jesus used when he told the parable of the lost sheep or the lost coin. It's that intense searching. And then there's to seek, you know, just like plain old simple, ah, what am I gonna, where am I going to go on vacation today? You know, vacation this year. You know, so you seek out information, kind of nonchalant. So what could be left? What kind of seeking could be left? The seek that Jesus used in this passage was to seek and to worship God. And so this teaches us that we are to have, or to be realizing that we are worshiping as we pray. And worship in the modern day definition means to feel a reverence for. To, to give God that reverence that he so deserves. So it's you know, telling you to calm down, Take a deep breath, center yourself before going into prayer. Now, there are multiple times where prayers are immediate, and, and it's, you don't have time to do that. Like when you almost avoid an accident when you're driving. Oh my God, you avoid a deer or avoid a car or something like that. Prayers are not fixed, and that's okay. But on a regular basis, on your daily devotion time or prayer time, take a few deep breaths. Be still and know that he is God. And then, go into prayer. I hope that brings you a, a deeper sense and a deeper closeness to God. And the last thing of prayer is to knock. Now, every time I hear, you know, knock, what pops into my brain, I assume we all have seen this picture of Jesus in front of a door, a wood door that doesn't have a doorknob, and he kind of light, looks like he's lightly tapping on it. And the whole theology behind that, or the thinking behind that, is we're on the other side, we have to let Jesus in, and um, he won't, he can't get in unless we do that. But here Jesus is teaching us to knock, and there, no, there's no other fancy definitions of this one. To knock means to knock, to rap on a door. So when you think about, he says, knock, put yourself in front of that door, in that picture, and you're the one knocking to get God's attention on the other side. And in doing that, I mean, I realize, I pictured that, I realized that the door is closed, probably for a reason, that maybe we are not asking for the right thing, or it's the wrong time, or for whatever reason, what we are asking for or want to talk to God about the time's not right. Now, as I was thinking about this sermon and thinking about when I prayed for Elise, doing my thing with the Lisa softball team, I go, it would have been great to try and experiment and pray to God and say, make a win. Instead of asking the girls, you know, help, asking God to help the girls do their best and see what would have happened. But I can't do that. I wouldn't know the answer. Um, but the last one is knock. Keep knocking. Until either we ask for what is right or the time is God's timing is right for what we're asking for. When I think about what happened at General Conference this past week, don't think that this is the first time inclusive language has been brought before General Conference. Since I have been your lay member to annual conference, and that was what, late 90s? Since I have been to our annual conference, Legislation for inclusive language has been brought up almost every year. And the heated discussions that went on at our annual conferences over this. And the thing I started to notice as the years went by is that the yay and nays, the numbers got closer and closer together. When I started, hypothetical numbers here, because I don't remember them exactly, 
85% of the delegates in, in New Jersey didn't want inclusive language in our book of discipline, or to even vote on it, and 15 didn't. Then it might have gone to 80, 20, then 75, 25. And slowly over the years, by the, thing, the, the last time I remember that we voted on it, it was almost 50-50. That, that's how close we got. That this vote passed at general, and I'm assuming this happened at general conference, so I know it was brought up at other general conferences, maybe not from New Jersey's conference, but through other conferences. That this vote passed this time by 93% of the global delegation speaks volumes to how the spirit has moved among our churches and our people. We kept knocking. And I assume, finally, God's timing was right. And the door was open for us. Knocking's important. It's important to remember that we just don't stop. We pray once and don't get an answer. When it's something you feel is definitely on your heart and important, keep knocking. For you, he will answer. It will be open to you when God's timing is right. And we can see this throughout history. Think of Martin Luther King. Do you think he wasn't praying for peace and justice? Or Rosa Parks for equality? Or, you know, all those kind of historical moments that have happened. Back to my uh, New Age days, uh, I joined in one of their events. It was just put out there as a voluntary thing. And that was to pray for an hour on New Year's Day I can't remember what year this was. Um, wherever you were in the world, and I, they pick a, a, what is it, pretty much time where everyone can join in. Um, at the same time, I pray for world peace. And so I did that that year. And that's the year the Berlin Wall came down. If you don't think that hit me, like the power of communi community prayer, communal prayer, how powerful it can be, Nothing more. I believe prayer is probably the most powerful tool we have in our tool belt as Christians. As long as we are willing to ask and seek and knock. Amen. Amen.
now we move into our time of Holy Communion. As always, I extend Christ's invitation. He is our host, we are his guests, and all are welcome to the table. And as we come, it's good to come with clean hands and clean hearts. I would ask that you join me in praying on confession. Seeking one, one, you are, are the beginning and the end, end of our search. Finding one, you are the Alpha and Omega of all discovery. Asking one, you are the voice in the silence of our exploration. Giving one, you are the fullness and the emptiness of all reality. Persistent one, you never abandon your search for us, nor tire of our repetitive to and growing. Receiving one, you endlessly welcome us home and spread over us peace in the face of our constant requests for mere morsels of bread. Search us, O God, and find within us the secrets we hide. Ask us, O God, and receive from within us the pain we bear. Keep knocking at the door of our lives until we open our wills to your purpose, our lives to your life, and our yearning to your will. When we forget to seek you and discover that we have lost our place, Lord, have mercy. When we ask once and leave it at that, Christ, have mercy. When we draw back from knocking, least we do it be, Lord, have mercy. Strengthen our courage, bolster our endurance, spur us onward in your way, in our world, in our power of the Spirit. In the name of Christ. Amen. Linda, can I ask you to bring me offering forward? And as she comes with me, ask for a volunteer to help serve the community with the cup. Giving grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us in the upside down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth not for what we have, but what we can give. Let us give away generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation. Amen. Now we move to the time of great thanksgiving. There is no response from you, so I just ask that you bow your heads. God, you are before all things, you are beyond all things, and in the midst of all things and all people, you have made yourself known. In Israel's ancient codes and prophetic writings, in the stories of women and men throughout the ages, in Jesus of Nazareth, in compassion for the outcast, forgiveness for the fallen, hope for the poor and the hungry, in his life poured out for others and broken in rejection, you made yourself known. We greet the one who comes in your name, your true light, your true love, the bread of compassion, the juice of renewal. As Jesus broke bread before his death, as he poured out wine before he gave his life on the cross, as he lived his life in acts of goodness, and as he invited all to the feast of new hope, so we come, God of Jesus, in your love. Come to us, Spirit of our Lord of love. Let the bread and the juice before us bear your life to our life. Nourish us with his vision of hope and unite us in one body of peace. Nourish us with your brokenness, renew us with your spirit, empower us with your powerlessness, that roots, our roots may be deepened in your risen life and bear fruit in your world. For you are our life, you are our hope, you are our peace, and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Table is set, and all are welcome. <clears throat> this is the body of Christ, our bread of life. Come to the feast.
short story closing thing on the back of the bulletin. It is a new song for us. It has been the theme song for, for those of us who have wanted inclusive language. It, we've sung it at every annual conference, and uh, it has been sung a lot this past week. Um, I don't think I told this story. Back to general conference this past week on Friday, a lot of our delegates posted videos of what was going on, and there was actually, most of the delegates were in a conga line <laughs> to that old disco song, Love Train. <laughs> that is the spirit and the, and the feeling that was how it ended. But this song, they started singing after the vote, and we have sung it, and I'm sure it's being sung around the denomination. So, I know it's new, so Jim, I'm going to ask you if you can